I rise to move the motion and to seek confirmation of cross-party support for a long-standing Alliance Party proposal that the Executive and the Assembly implement a Bengoa-style independent root and branch review of our education system to bring forward recommendations for action that will deliver a more integrated education system, organised and resourced to provide a quality educational opportunity for all children and young people to develop their own unique personality, talent, ability and potential. Mr Speaker, education is the engine room for individual, social and economic development and well-being. Yet our education system is in deep financial crisis. It is broke and broken. But this should shock no one in the Assembly. The former Education Authority CEO warned over two years ago that the education system in Northern Ireland would be unaffordable, socially immobile and unfit for the 21st century without radical investment and reform. The Education Authority of Northern Ireland mission is to provide a high quality education for every child. Yet we now know that the Education Authority, at least in terms of special education provision, is failing this mission and it must be a priority of the Executive and the Assembly to take decisive action and implement an independent review. Whilst there have been a number of reviews of aspects of education in Northern Ireland, the Alliance Party believes an urgent independent review of previous recommendations and our entire education system is needed to inform specific actions for radical investment and reform. Mr Speaker, we have given a commitment to take the politics and vested interests out of health. It is time to do the same for education. We have given our commitment, of course, to support the many skilled and innovative teaching and non-teaching staff in Northern Ireland, passionate about their vocation and dedicated to our children and young people. They deserve urgent delivery of the commitment to implement the fair pay and improved conditions agreed with the Department of Education in 2019. The implementation of this agreement needs no review. It needs financed and delivered. As part of this delivery, I welcome the commitment given by the Education Minister at the recent N2 conference to deliver radical change to the school inspection and improvement process. But, Mr Speaker, the Assembly Education Committee made recommendations for school inspection and improvement reform in 2014. The education system is achieving positive outcomes for children and young people, particularly at primary level, according to the Programme for International Student Assessment. But more average system-wide performance is found at post-primary level, according to the trends in international maths and science study. Evidence-based research, like investigating links in attainment and deprivation, has found our education system to be high on quality and low on equity, with significant gaps in attainment that it links to a wide range of factors, including the current flawed and exclusionary approach to post-primary transfer. Mr Deputy Speaker, the segregation and separation of our children and young people on the basis of community background at age five and performance in a non-reset, unregulated and unnecessary high-stakes test at the age of 10 and 11 are two great scandals of education in Northern Ireland. The human cost is significant and the financial cost of this division and duplication in education has been estimated by the Ulster University Centre for Economic Policy to be up to almost £100 million per year. Contributing to a financial crisis that has reached tipping point for our schools, around half of which are in budget deficit, many of which are over capacity, under resourced, and in an unfit estate. An internal audit has confirmed long standing, widely held, and serious concern that the special educational needs framework is also failing to support teachers and children with special educational needs. It has uncovered undue and unnecessary delay to education authority assessment and support central to delivering early intervention and raises serious questions about the governance and accountability of our education system for the Minister for Education, the Department of Education and the Education Authority Board. These findings follow attempts by the education authority to cut special educational nursery hours to part-time and poorly handled proposals for Belfast special schools 
that were opposed by thousands of parents across our community. Non-verbal children have been left unattended for hours on special educational needs transport provision and inadequate access to educational psychology and classroom assistance support is becoming norm. Mr Deputy Speaker, as Chair of the Education Committee, I will work with colleagues to deliver accountability and support for children with special educational needs. Area planning has been sectoral based rather than innovative and the good relations indicators suggest that up to 20% of first choice applications to integrated schools cannot be facilitated due to a lack of available places. I therefore welcome proposals for an integrated education bill by my colleague Kelly Armstrong, MLA, and I look forward to working with her to progress this bill. There are other first actions that the executive could take to promote a more integrated and fit for purpose education system, such as repealing the exemption of teachers from the Fair Employment and Treatment Order, widening access to the Certificate of Religious Education, and giving more measured and substantive consideration to the recommendations of the initial teacher training review. Mr Deputy Speaker, about 90% of pupils in Northern Ireland are educated in schools that identify with a single tradition or dom denomination. We have two planning authorities, nine sectoral support organisations funded publicly, approximately 1,153 primary and post-primary schools, and about 36% of primary schools with fewer than 105 pupils. We pay over £100 million per year to transport pupils many times past local schools to schools of a different sector. The Department of Education has a budget second only to the Department of Health of about £2 billion per year. Yet papers recently submitted to the Assembly Education Committee by the Department of Education officials suggest resource and capital pressures of almost £1 billion per year for our education system in the financial year 2022-23. Years of underfunding, a lack of radical investment and reform have of course contributed to the scale of this financial challenge. The independent root and branch review of our education system must therefore be urgently implemented and report in a timely manner. Its building blocks should be giving children the best start in life, student attainment, inclusion, increased investment in teaching and classrooms and reconciliation. It should, it should, I'll give away briefly. Okay. I've listened carefully to the member. I'm not quite sure I've, well, I don't want to misrepresent his vision, but the document uh, New Decade talks about the diversity of school types being not sustainable. Is it the member's vision that we would simply have a controlled integrated sector no maintained sector, no Irish medium cent, uh, uh, sector, and that there would be one state system which would be integrated in the sense it would be for everyone. Is that his vision? Thank you, Member, for his intervention, but I'm, I'm sure a man of his learned opinion would realise that that would be to preempt uh, a root and branch ind independent view, review, the like of which we are calling for. Um, it should, however, refer to radical reform for law, policy and practice, governance and administration, employment and recruitment, integrated, effective and efficient delivery, area planning, co-design and co-production with the community. It is shocking that political parties abdicated executive authority to respond to these matters for over three years. But we must now grasp the opportunity to work together to deliver better. The people of Northern Ireland demand better better than the broke and broken education system that we have inherited, better on early education and childcare, parental involvement in education, post-primary transfer, curriculum access, parity of esteem for vocational pathways, collaboration with further education, quality careers advice and work experience, and effective parental community and business partnerships to raise aspiration and attainment. The focus, Mr Deputy Speaker, must be to deliver an integrated education system, organised and resourced, to provide quality educational opportunity for all children. The educational, social and financial need for a different approach to a child-centred education system fit for the 21st century is clear. I ask the Assembly to support the motion.
And could I now ask Karen Mullen to move amendment number one? I move amendment number one. Okay. And you will have ten minutes to propose the amendment and then a further five minutes to wind at the end of the debate. And I invite you to open your uh, discussion on amendment number one. The new decade new approach document provided the basis for the restoration of these institutions. Sinn Féin, along with others, placed an em emphasis on education throughout the negotiation process, and this, thankfully, was reflected in the final agreement. This amendment is about bringing the motion back in line with the commitments made in the new decade new approach deal. That commitment was outlined in the amendment that, that, that commitment as outlined in the amendment had a level of buy-in from all parties and so we should work to progress it. Agreements have been made before and often only partially implemented. I hope this agreement really does signify a new approach to how we do politics and governance in this part of Ireland. As part of my work, like many others in this chamber, I visit schools right across the north every week. Ever shrinking school budgets, teacher pay stagnation, crumbling school infrastructure and the rising diagnosis of special education needs have put our frontline services under massive press pressure. It is my firm view that the way we, in which we deliver on our obligations to our children and young people, to our families and to our teachers requires fundamental reform going forward. We must seek to ensure greater efficiency in the system where resources are used to maximise the educational benefits for children and young people. Without predetermining the outcome of any review, there are obvious and practical changes that could be made. We must look to a more cost-effective approach to procurement and trust schools to make decisions that best suit them when it comes to accessing minor works and supplies. Greater progress and political leadership must be made in respect of area planning and the realisation of a truly sustainable network of schools with a highly, high quali quality of education provision and greater educational outcomes. The education system as we know it is a crisis point. There is no avoiding the necessity of reform to shy away from the tough decisions now would have devastating consequences for the system itself, for our children and young people and for our society in years to come. But while reform is crucial, we cannot escape the fact that the system requires a significant and urgent injection of cash. In real terms, there is well over £200 million less in the system now than there was 10 years ago. The austerity programme pursued by the Tory government has cruelly left its mark on our public services here, particularly on our education system. In spite of this, teachers and school leaders have delivered a high quality of education to our children and young people, many of whom have achieved great outcomes. However, this should not mask the serious tale of underachievement still experienced by many children, particularly children from working class and disadvantaged backgrounds. Addressing this issue is also a commitment contained within the New Decade New Approach Agreement. And I hope to see the executive advance this area of work alongside any independent review. The education, education system we have boasts a diversity of school types, each with its own distinctive ethos and values. Parents choose what schools they want to send their children to for a multitude of reasons. Acknowledging that diversity must be part of the conversation going forward as we explore the prospects of what a single education system might look like. Open and frank conversations about curriculum and ethos will be crucial over the next number of years if we are to realise a truly and open, open and inclusive education system. I look forward to seeing the Executive take this review forward as a priority and I would encourage the widest possible engagement and participation in the process by all stakeholders involved in the provision of education here. Sinn Féin will also support amendment number two in the spirit that it is intended, but I must po point out that in no way does that include the current teachers' industrial action which should and will be sorted in the coming weeks. Very <coughs> much. And I call on Jerry Carl to move amendment number two. So moved, Mr Speaker. Thank you. 
Um, the Assembly should note that the amendments are mutually exclusive. So uh, if amendment number one is made, the question will not be put on amendment number two. I can advise you that you will have 10 minutes to, to propose amendment number two and a further five minutes to wind at the end of the debate. All our speakers in this debate will have five minutes. I now invite you to move amendment number uh, Thanks, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I want to welcome this debate and thank the members uh, for bringing it. And I want to thank the um, previous member for accepting and uh, supporting rather, uh, Amendment Number Two. Um, the future of our education system seems to be on everyone's lips at the minute, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and for good reason. Uh, it's clear that there are changes which could be made uh, to ensure we're providing the best education service possible, not only for our young people and their educational needs, but ensure our teachers can enjoy a decent quality of life where they are paid properly for the invaluable work that they do and aren't relied upon to fill gaps caused by budget cuts or deal with unmanageable workloads. And clearly the sector is under massive pressure, whether it's larger class sizes, less classroom assistance, children unable to get statemented, or teachers telling us they simply cannot take on any more. The impact is felt by students and staff alike. And there, there can be no doubt that cuts, cuts and budget restrictions have played a fundamental uh, role in these issues. It is unacceptable, and I hope we can all agree on this, that children are going without the special assistance they require. It's unacceptable that dedicated teachers have been forced to take industrial action for the pay raises their colleagues across the water are getting. We believe it's unacceptable, though I suspect not everybody in this House uh, will agree, that young people are being educated separately based on their religion. Integrated education represents one of the best ways that we can move beyond the communism that we should leave in the past. It is unacceptable that schools and teachers are relying on donations from everything from basic stationery to toilet paper. It is unacceptable too that we have situations where special needs schools have to self-fundraise in order to get essential equipment to cover the cost for pupil support. Mr Deputy Speaker, this situation where our education system has been chronically underfunded and not meeting the re required need has existed for far too long. For example, while pupil numbers have risen across the board by some 2.5 per cent since 2011, spending per head has decreased. In addition, year-on-year -year budgets have been slashed, and unless this is tackled, we will jump from one crisis to the next. Not least the outstanding issues involving pay, uh, amongst teachers and other education workers. And this, in this sense, while I welcome the motion, I have provided an amendment that I hope the proposers will accept. It's very clear to me, uh, at government level, if we can have any hope uh, to talk about efficiency in the sector, we'll have to see an injection uh, of funding into our education system. And I'm not the only person saying such a thing. I note the recent NIFR's committee at Westminster, for example, were pressed for an injection of funding to tackle the underspend in our education system. I agree with that, and I hope other parties would agree in making this a key priority going forward. That's why I'm bringing an amendment today, Mr Deputy Speaker, because too often the strategy for dealing with educational underfunding from this Assembly has been one that is very much inside the austerity neoliberal framework, framework of economics. Too often, discussions about solving the problem in our education system becomes one that pushes for a reduction in schools or services. Indeed, one recent consultation, as was previously mentioned and referred to, about our special needs schools um, proposed that the majority of these schools uh, close through a process of amalgamation. It was a shocking proposal that was met by mass opposition from parents, pupils, other activists, trade unionists as well. And I was proud to play a leading role in that campaign um, and showed how it shed a light on how the language of efficiency uh, can often be used to push through cuts and closures to schools. And that term, efficiency costs, immediately rings alarm bells with me, Mr Deputy Speaker. While no one would disagree, with the idea of more efficient spending, we want to ensure that it's not code for cuts. And I want to ensure that uh, if this Assembly does pass a motion today about running our, our schools efficiently, inclusively and with higher standards, that that is because we are investing in the sector properly and where it is needed, rather than making harmful and dangerous cuts. To that end, I have proposed an amendment which argues for an expansion of public funding in order to support the delivery of costs identified within the review and addressing pay disputes in teaching unions and other education sectors. Thank you. I now call William Humphrey.
Speaker, and I carry an interest at the outset of my contribution as a governor in two schools. Um, without question, Mr Deputy Speaker, Northern Ireland has a world-class education system, a system which we should be proud of, but nevertheless we should seek to reform, improve and develop as we build on that success. Any independent review must be the way forward, but however, resource is the key in managing expectation. I do believe a widespread consultation is needed, but it is absolutely important that in that consultation the views of young people must be taken into account. As I have said, we have a world-class education system, and it is one that we should be proud of, but any review must and will start from a good base. We must pay tribute at this stage, I think, to the school principals, teachers, governors and staff who work in, in all roles in schools across the education systems in Northern Ireland for the tremendous work that they have done, particularly over the last three years when there has been some uncertainty around the issue in terms of funding and resource. These people have shown how dedicated and committed they are and are exemplary in terms of their motiva motivation and their being well trained to deliver for our young people. I would also very much welcome uh, any expert panel which the Minister might set up, particularly around a number of issues including uh, underachievement in education. But I do think any panel must not simply look at education in terms of those who populate that panel. I think it is important that we have role models from communities who young people might look up to, people who have been a success in industry and commerce and the professions. And again, young people must be part of that panel or representatives of young people. I think that is hugely important. The future investment in our young people is hugely important, and that is why I think that a joined upness across government is absolutely needed to deal with inefficiency and duplication in terms of funding, if that exists. Any review must take into consideration working across government departments here at Stormont, but also working with universities in terms of, for example, uh, the estate in terms of um, sports facilities and provision, local government and, of course, neighbourhood partnerships as well. I would commend and pay tribute to Derek Baker, the Permanent Secretary of the Department of Education, for the role he has played over the last couple of years, along with Tommy O'Reilly, who as Deputy Permanent Secretary, did a tremendous job of work working with members here and ensuring there was stability and even initiative going forward during that time when no ministers were in place. Mr. Speaker, as I have said, uh, it is important to get economies of scale and reduce wastage. We must ensure that all funding goes to frontline services. And as a governor of a secondary school, I can assure you that too often money is used to provide professional counselling, for example, which is taken out of the frontline budget of, 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 of a school principal. Therefore, that reduces the amount of money that can be spent on education. That is simply not acceptable. And I think a greater working across government may well. Uh, approve and develop that working basis going forward. We cannot any longer have a silo approach to these issues. The agreement of this House around these issues is hugely important, but nonetheless, implementation is the key. We cannot create false hope and unrealistic expectations. We need to address key issues in terms of underfunding and resource in terms of special educational needs. Only a number of weeks ago, some of us from the Education Committee met with the, the uh, leadership team from the educational needs sector in Northern Ireland. What we heard was stark, and frankly, it was, in cases, disgraceful. We need to know... I'm happy to give away. Just in the context of the member's contribution in relation to the presentation received, particularly the presentation received by EA and the feelings that have been found in their internal report, an audit as they have called it, that wasn't carried out by auditors. Would the member agree with me that it is time, given what we have heard, for a full independent review of uh, EA? The member's next well, actually, I am grateful to the member for agreeing for me, with me because he knows I called for that at the committee last week. Um, in terms of narrowing the gap in terms of educational underachievement, free school meals and access to good quality education is important for all of our young people. And no doubt, knowing the minister, uh, over many years, I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that the Minister will listen to the, to the assertions and the presentations and the information that will come through any process 
and will act in the best interests of our young people. It is important that we seek to introduce meaningful deliverable proposals, and they must be deliverable, that will make a positive impact and change the lives for many. Every child is, in, is entitled to the best start in life, and we must cr uh, create expectations. We must not, sorry, create expectations, but we must deliver. It is important that this House unites around education as we go forward. We can't any longer simply criticise about money not being provided. The Minister has set out very clearly at the Committee a number of weeks ago the money that he needs to ensure that education moves forward and delivers for all people. But we must deliver for all people, including many in the constituency that I represent, who come from working class, working class hard to reach communities, in particular young Protestant boys, but also in terms of the number of young Catholic the boys. Remarks are a number. Whilst this, this, this continues, it's simply not an education system that's fair. And I, I'm, uh, we will support the Alliance motion. And I call Daniel McCrossan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And to you at the outset as well, uh, uh, before making my contribution, I would like to put firmly on record my sincere appreciation to Derek Baker, Tommy O'Reilly, but also our principals and teachers, classroom assistants, those who have kept the lights on in our schools over the last three years in the absence of these institutions. I think the work that our principals and teachers have done is fantastic. Uh, they've absolutely continued uh, in the face of many challenges uh, to ensure that our children are looked after uh, in light of some of the circumstances we've faced. Uh, I rise today as the education spokesperson for the SDLP and I welcome the opportunity to contribute to the important debate and I want to thank uh, Chris Little and his colleagues, uh, Kerry Armstrong, for bringing it forward. In this regard, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I think we can all agree that our current education system is unsustainable. It is hemorrhaging money on a significant scale and it is uh, absolutely unsustainable in its current form. We are facing inescapable pressures within our public services and education is not immune to that. If we do not take action, our schools and the many dedicated principals and teaching staff across the North will continue to suffer as a result, and suffer they have, Mr Deputy Speaker, and I think it's very clear uh, from the previous speakers of some of the challenges that our schools have faced in terms of resources and how they've been uh, largely ignored and isolated by the Education Authority, which is very well on record in recent weeks. We do need more money, but we also need to look at how our education system is delivering for each child in Northern Ireland. In this context, the SDLP supports an independent review of education, as uh, repeated by, or as claimed by, uh, Mr. Humphreys, a review that will look at how we can best provide top quality and top class education for all, an education system that will provide the building blocks for our children and one that will give them the best possible future. Mr. Deputy Speaker, we believe that our education system is in need of reform, a reform that moves towards the development of a single education system one which will develop the integrated sector while still operating a system where parental choice continues to play an important role in ensuring that our schools are delivering efficiently and effectively with improved access to the curriculum and ever higher standards. Mr Deputy Speaker, with this what this review can't be is a slash and burn exercise conducted in a typical haphazard and inconsistent approach we have become accustomed to in relation to our public services. Any change cannot happen overnight, and there is not a one-size-fits-all fix to this situation. Our priority should be on the quality of education provided and how that can be done sustainably without the need for unnecessary school closures or any decision having a hugely disproportionate impact on parts of our society. I do not believe that completely abandoning our faith-based schools or our Irish medium schools is the way forward, Mr Deputy Speaker. We also uh, consider the future prospect of joint faith schools supporting the educate, educating of our children and young people of different backgrounds together. Mr Deputy Speaker, one other thing that we can all agree here today is that we need to invest more in integrated education. And despite coming a considerable way in terms of provision, and now having 65 schools fully integrated and another nine in the pipeline in response to parental choice, we have still not come far enough. And Mr Deputy Speaker, like many members here, I have seen some great work undertaken in the integrated sector within my own constituency of West Sharon, the Minister will know very well, Drumbrae Integrated College is possibly one of the best examples of how integrated education works so very well. And just can I put on record my appreciation to the retiring principal, the retired principal now, Colin Firth, for his fantastic work in ensuring that the integrated movement has a footprint in West Sharon. Currently, we have no ministerial target on the percentage of schools integrated. We have no action plan on, on the independent review of integrated education that took place three years ago. 
and we have only used 14% of the available funding for integrated education, the Fresh Start Agreement. These are issues that need immediate and tangible action, something that we have not seen to date. There needs to be clear targets set and there needs to be proper capital and resource investment in the sector with buy-in from each political party. That has to be a starting point. I do not believe that this minister nor the previous education minister have been totally committed to increasing integration within our school system. That has to change as, benefits, as the benefits of integration are clearly apparent. Mr Deputy Speaker, we have had three years of inaction with no government here, which has had an impact on growing a single education system. In this context, and in coming to today's amendment as proposed by Sinn Féin, given the crisis within education, I do believe that we are in the need of an independent review into education and how we can utilise our resources and public finances better. In keeping with the declaration of the new decade, new approach, we must ensure that every school has a sustainable core budget to facilitate delivery can I ask the of member quality education. To we also need to look at how educational outcomes can be improved within the system, improvements that could be, where possible, cost-neutral to the public purse. And also, Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, we uh, add our support to Mr Carroll's amendment as well. Thank you. I call Robbie Butler. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, I welcome today's motion on behalf of the Ulster Unionist Party and Spokesperson for Education and reser Reservedly Support Amendment No. 1. It is, I think, unanimously agreed uh, across this Assembly that improvement, sustainability, good governance and inclusivity for all our children should be a focus not only for the Minister for Education but for all the Executive Ministers. Given that education accounts for the second largest allocation uh, of money per annum from the combined budget, that is only part of the story as to why we need a fundamental review of the provision, efficiency, measurability and appropriateness of education and the curriculum. And all of this will be underpinned by the absolute goal of seeing education and educating together as a significant factor of learning together, to live together, to thrive together. Over these past few weeks, having taken my position on the Education Committee, I have been astounded by the complexity of our current system. Two planning authorities underpinned by seven sectoral organisations only fractionally indicate some of the complexity and overtly administrative and analytically cumbersome systems in place. Recent reports and surveys have indicated that the, the, the vast majority of parents uh, would like to see an end to segregated style education. And that can, uh, ending that can take many, many forms. One might agree with this, and, uh, this ideal and some might even think that's a modern progressive ideal. However, back as far as 1923, a certain Charles Vane Tempest Stewart, or Lord Londonderry for short, tried to introduce uh, the Education Act 1923, and he got short shift from just about every quarter. In 2020, a lot has changed, but much has stayed the same. Predominantly, we see our children segregated from age four on, with most controlled schools in particular making some uh, headway and moves to change this. But let's be clear, segregation does not end there. Due to the, to the draconian exemption of teachers from fair employment legislation, segregation and discrimination is maintained. Mr Speaker, how can this be right? We need to be brave, we need to be visionary, and we need to be outcomes focused with regard to the review and any recommendations. Parents and pupils' voices along with those of our teachers must be equally heard. But I think that it would be incumbent on all of us to consider the societal shifts that have happened since 1923 and entwine them into an education system that is not only fit for 2020 but projected to continually support, improve and champion our young people. There are many aspects that we can major on today but I will finish in one. Our young people are under more pressure than they ever were and we ever were. They are burdened by increasing demands educationally, socially, financially and aspirationally. Is it any wonder in this fast-paced world that we see a growing issue with mental ill health in our school-age population. I believe that we must look at our curriculum with regard to a province-wide approach to well-being and resilience. We must ensure a partnership approach is designed with schools, parents, carers, statutory agencies, voluntary community sector that ensures that every child is central to that journey, valued and nurtured in what they are good at, inspired to be the best they can be and convinced that this government values their education Highly. This will require us to get the building blocks right. Early intervention, parental support, tackling disadvantage, partnership and community response will be vital in the transforming of education into the jewel that it could and should be. 
It would be remiss of us all here today to not recognise the excellent work done by our teachers. Rising attainment standards across our schools pays testament to the hard work and value placed on our pupils by our teachers. And in my own constituency, it has been my delight to watch my old school of Lisnagarvey High School improve year on year and transform its fortunes and that of its pupils. The next step, Minister and Executive, need not be hard if we can agree on the principle of not only the whole school, whole child mantra, but add, importantly, every child. Thank you. I call Robin Newton. <coughs> uh, thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And, um, Pleased to support the motion, which is uh, a direct lift from the new decade and new approach document. I think it would be remiss uh, not to pay tribute to Mr. Derek Baker, who held the fort to uh, a very large extent while elected representatives uh, absented themselves uh, from this chamber. Also, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Deputy Speaker, to pay tribute to the, the, the dedication of principals, of teachers, of the admin staff, and indeed the school support staff who operated in that vacuum for a period of three years. I have to say I am a bit nervous about some of the words that I've heard uh, around the, uh, the chamber so far. I'm nervous about what might be regarded as a root and branch uh, approach, um, because I do believe that we have much to be proud about in our educational system and a very strong foundation on which to build uh, for, for the future. That's not to say, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that we shouldn't be addressing issues. We should, of course, we should be addressing issues, uh, but we have much to be proud about. In fact, I would describe it as Northern Ireland's educational system is a crown, as a star, in the, in the, a jewel in the crown of Northern Ireland. And it really just needs to be polished frequently, polished continually, to make it that, that much better. Um, I'll give way. I, I, thank you very much um, to the member for giving way, and I appreciate him giving away, and I'll be, and I'll be very brief. He just said that um, our educational system is the jewel in the crown of Northern Ireland. Would you not think it's worth qualifying that a little by pointing to the extremely poor educational outcomes for, in Northern Ireland for people from underprivileged uh, backgrounds? Indeed, his colleague from North Belfast drew attention to that for young Protestant boys, but also the legacy of intense and constant division within our educational system. It's, it's hard to describe it as a jewel in the crown without those two things being mentioned. The members, an extra minute. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, I, do, I do accept that there are problems and there are issues that I, I hope that within the next two years of this assembly, we will make, make some progress on, on, on addressing. But let me also point out, let me also point out, when, indeed when uh, when universities are looking for uh, students, Northern Ireland is one of the areas that Scotland searches and trying to attract students. And England's educational system falls far, England's educational system falls far below the academic results of, of Northern Ireland. So there is much to be proud about. Can I just say that um, it's also disappointing that uh, when the proposer of the motion was asked by Mr. Allister, just to define his vision on the motion, not to quantify it, but define his vision. He wasn't able to actually answer that uh, in any meaningful way. But there can be no doubt that our schools face challenges. I accept that we face challenges. Many aspects of our system do need to be challenged, and certainly those aspects that deal with, and I don't like the term underachievement, but we do need to support pupils and give them a pathway to success. We may need to make changes. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And we may need to make even cultural changes within our schools. But there are many aspects that we should remember. Uh, that, uh, and remember that we are investing in our children and investing in the children for the future. We're investing in our children, investing in our young people, and we're investing in our future society and we're investing in our economy for the future because we don't have the natural resources of some other areas, some other countries. And our only natural resource for the future of our economy is our, our, our people. 
We need to look forward with a degree of confidence and build on the success of, of the schools. And need, we need to do this, and it has already been mentioned around the room, but we need consensus uh, on a way forward. And I hope when it comes to making the hard decisions, we will, and people have been complained about area planning, but I hope when we come to make the hard decisions that there will be the unanimity around the chamber that is being reflected today on uh, the problem. The words external and independent, and it is mentioned within the, the, the agreement, it's a straight lift from the agreement, but I know that in the Long Gallery just a couple of Fridays ago, when that was muted amongst uh, roughly about 80 headmasters, certainly there was a reaction, not another report. Now, if, if we are to do another report, and we're calling for another report, if we are to do another report, then we need to involve the skills and the knowledge of the existing principles. We need to take notice of what they say. We can't have an independent come from wherever and attempt to impose. We have, we have much experience, and that experience needs to be enhanced Needs Would to the be taken cognizance of and indeed needs to be uh, attended to. I suppose if you were looking for what might make up the essentials of a... The member's time is well, up. Uh, I thank you, Mr Speaker, and uh, we will be supporting the motion. I call John O'Dowd. Uh, can call you. Uh, and I rise to support the Sinn Féin amendment and the amendment under Mr Carroll's name as well. Uh, I, I note uh, in Mr Newton's closing remarks that he referred to a group of principals saying not yet another report. And I have to say that was my reaction when, when, when I see proposals for a review or working group uh, or whatever it may be. But I, I do believe that there is space and an opportunity for an independent review into the education sector, which will challenge us all in terms of of what we believe an education system should look like in the future. But to look into the future, it's worthwhile to look into the past. And Mr Butler referred to, I think it was 1923, uh, when there was provision brought forward for a single education system, and, and it was rejected, for, rejected for a variety of reasons. Uh, and I will say, I think the Catholic Church were acting in, in a selfish manner at that time. But, and it's an important but, without Catholic education, Irishness, would have been educated out of the system. Our young people who wanted to be learned about their culture, their language, their sport, their history, their nation, would have not have been given that opportunity. So I'm no defender of the Catholic Church, but in this instance, I think they, they have given a great service to the community who wish to hold on to their Irish identity in this state. But let's see what we're going to do when we move forward and change is a huge challenge for politicians. I often tell the story that when I was appointed Education Minister in 2011, I was only in the post 15 minutes and I was going through those doors for a vote. And a member from the opposite benches, who's no longer in the chamber or a member of the, of the House, stopped me and said, Minister, you have to deal with this school. It has to close. I was aware of the school, but the school went through the process and it had to close and I signed off on it. I opened uh, the, the media pack which ministers get and there was a photograph of the same member standing with a placard saying save this school. Mm -hmm. And I said to him a few days later, I said, I thought you told me to close that school. And he says, Minister, all politics is local. So I accept that analogy, but for us to make change in our education system, we're going to have to set that one aside. Health is another area where we're going to have to set it, set it aside as well. But the, the, the Assembly over this last three terms has created change in the education system. We brought about the Education Authority. And that was a huge compromise on all sides of this House because it's not the vision I wanted. It's not the vision the, the, the benches opposite wanted and even indeed the benches on my side here. But it was a compromise. The question is, was the vision that was proposed in the Education Authority, has it delivered? And when you look at the Sen report and the audit into how children with special educational needs have been treated, that vision hasn't been delivered. 
And there is an onus on the Education Authority, its executive branch, and its board to deliver that vision. Because that's not what this Assembly voted for or asked for. So there's challenges there. I note, and my concerns me when I hear calls from certain quarters of this chamber for a single education authority, there are certain sections of our education system they're looking to set aside. The Irish medium sector always comes in for, for, for a poke in these debates, even though it is providing a high quality education system under the parental preference procedure, where parents have chose to send their children through the Irish medium sector to be educated and should be allowed to continue to do so. I also have concerns that we could reach a stage where our Irishness is educated, is no longer educated to our young people. That cannot be the case. No more than it should be allowed that people's Britishness should not be, edu should not be taught to them uh, in their schools. People's identity is important to them. It is important that they learn about it. But they learn about it in a way not to be exclusive, but to be inclusive. That we learn about it in a way that means that we don't believe we're superior to anyone else who lives in this part of the island or anywhere else. So yes, I'm all up for an inclusive uh, education system, but we have to recognise our history, we have to recognise our future and where we are going, and most of all, we have to deliver a high quality education system to those who most need it. And one of the members had talked about the, the Protestant working class boys. Protestant working the class aren't doing too close. well either. So let's ensure that education for the working class is good regardless of their, of their religious belief. I call Morris Bradley. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I rise in support of the motion uh, before us and I recognise the significant financial strain that the Department of Education is under. An expected overspend for 2019-20 of approximately £25 to £30 million. Pounds. That is not a good backdrop to commence an independent review of education under the new decade, new approach. I believe a written branch review is both timely and necessary, which will result in some hard decisions to be taken by this executive. The department faces many challenges. Special education needs have risen some 20 per cent in the past five years, and there is an SEN backlog which will have significant resource implications to rectify. 80 to 90 per cent of school funding is allocated to salaries. An increase in readable value of the school estate and a great many schools now operating in deficit paints a bleak picture. Therefore, the motion before us is timely. Our education system needs a fundamental overhaul. However, I would stress that our teaching staff, classroom assistants and pupils are performing to a very high standard with inadequate resources and many pupils are attaining excellent examination results. As many members have, I would also pay tribute to our head teachers, teachers, boards of governors, uh, as has already been alluded to, and I would concur with those previous remarks. But any independent review will need to set realistic parameters to seek to highlight and eradicate duplications and lack of sustainability. In closing, I believe if our education system is to evolve to meet the challenges that lie ahead, to provide each and every child the opportunity to be the best they possibly can, then this executive will have to recognise a significant additional allocation of budget could be needed to enact any recommendations that may emerge from such a fundamental review, thereby leading to greater efficiency and accountability. I support the motion. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I call Justin McNulty. Gourmet Yogurt, Las Concorla. I raise and support the motion as amended. Concorla, we all recognise there is much room for improvement in our education system. I welcome the external review as outlined in the new DECA New Approach document. And I believe it's only right we allow that review to take its course to hear from parents and professionals alike and then make its independent recommendations, bring them to fruition. Count Carla, our education system has evolved from a system that was only available to those who were well off to a system now which is hopefully universal. Our system can and must do, do better. I visited schools across the sector in recent weeks, and whilst there is no doubt that there is a need for fundamental reform, it is important that we listen to the views of those in the front line, both teachers and parents. Our system recognises parental choice, and it gives us a mix of, of options which include faith-based, integrated and Irish medium education. But where our system has flaws is in its burdensome bureaucracy, its red tape, 
and its management inefficiency. I recognise that the duplication and the inefficiencies must be made. The efficiencies must be made. I recognise the, short, the shortcomings in provision for those with special educational needs in school maintenance, school transport and much more. However, that doesn't mean we offer a one-size-fits-all view of education. Would the member accept that education establishments, like other establishments, should respect, not just respect, but celebrate our difference, that we should be aiming to have a society that can acknowledge difference, celebrate it, support it, and recognise it? And you said a one-size-fits-all does not fit, and I agree with that. But would the member go further to say we should be aiming to have a mature society that celebrates difference and is not threatened by it. Can, can I remind members that when they give way, they take their seats and then they resume standing again once they take the floor again. The member has an extra minute. Apologies, Colin Corla. Um, you took the words right out of my mouth. We need to protect parental choice and to celebrate diversity. Could he explain to the House how celebrating difference is reflected in the Catholic certificate, which excludes certain other uh, people from actually applying for jobs in certain schools in Northern Ireland? I'm not aware of the specific conditions you speak of, but I know how I was educated, and I know I was educated as a Catholic. I know that you know, okay. diversity was celebrated, so I'm not, I'm not aware of what you are specifically relating to. We need to protect parental choice and to celebrate diversity. But that doesn't mean the management structures at the centre cannot change. It does not mean we cannot drive more efficiencies. We need better governance. We need a system that is joined up and delivers, delivers better. We need a system that allows and celebrates the school's ethos, one which encourages cross-community work through our communities, not just when at school, but in the world of work, sport, and in the wider world. Count Curler, our schools are the bedrock of our communities, I would like this review to embrace not just what's in the classroom, but the world around us. I'm going to go off a little bit off-piste. I think education must allow and empower children to make the most of their talents. It's time to think, think outside the box. Our, cur our curriculum is currently geared towards manufacturing and the professions. Our focus should be on a curriculum that delivers a new, for a new economy that this place should be building towards. A curriculum encompassing coding, environmental awareness, IT technology, public health, focus on the impact of lifestyle choices, empathy and, devel and developing and building relationships, celebrating diversity, resilience, focus on positive mental health, virtual learning. The hidden benefits of virtual learning are enhanced by early adoption. And, and promote self-directed learning and individualist, individualistic thinking. We need to recognise that more important than intelligence is perseverance and the sheer amount of time you dedicate to your learning. We need to recognise that given the right set of, set of circumstances, any student can learn and excel in their education. I strongly believe that every child can learn regardless of their innate level of intelligence, and the gaps of an achievement can be mitigated through research and understanding of differences in individual backgrounds and opportunity. Cam Corla, I rise to support the motion as amended. Graham Iowit. I call Rachel Woods. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Northern Ireland is a complex educational structure with a range of bodies involved in its management and administration. It's a very simple sentence in the opening of the House of Commons briefing paper on the school system here. It just about touches on the complexity of how we educate our children. An inquiry published by the House of Commons Select Committee in 2019 stated that there is a clear need to reduce duplication across the education sector and for consolidation of the school estate and that there is a growing concern across the sector that current funding levels are not sufficient to deliver the quality of education that people, the pupils deserve and parents expect. According to the IFS, 
Northern Ireland has experienced the largest cut in education spend since 2009-2010, 11 per cent in real terms compared to other parts of the UK. And due to the complicated structure of education in Northern Ireland, it has long been argued that money is not being spent in the most efficient way. Whilst it is important to consider our ongoing demand for the way in which education is currently delivered, it is of equal relevance to look at what would be best benefit for our children. And this stark reality of our system and the quality of our education needs to be reviewed root and branch. It was good news to read in the NDNA document that the five parties committed to establish an external independent review of education provision, which included the prospects of moving towards a single education system. It's good news that we're able to debate this motion here today. But we must kickstart the commitments in the NDNA document and start a review of education provision as promised, and it must be done quickly. I am honoured to be standing here beside one of the first 28 pupils attending Lagan College, but she had to atten attend this integrated school surrounded by armed RUC guards, so we have much to do. An ambitious single publicly funded secular education system for Northern Ireland must be required. Academic testing should not be used for the purposes of determining admission to post-primary schools and the well-being of students and parents having to take these tests to conform to this system must be addressed. Students do ideally attend their local schools, which are community-based and receive outstanding levels of education whilst they're there. In our segregated society, the integra integration of students and children is vital to making it a more peaceful, cooperative and progressive and safe. How can we expect to move on from our past and move on from the divide if we continue to separate our children from four years old? We currently have 65 integrated schools in Northern Ireland, and according to Integrate My School, Ulster University estimated that the additional cost of a divided education system is between 16 and 95 million per year. This money should be spent where it is needed, for example, on proving SEN education and not on continuing separation. But if a financial argument isn't going to change our system alone, perhaps a more qualitative one will. Integrated education facilitates societal change. It unites people and encourages a more positive social attitude such as tolerance, understanding and mutual respect. A recent study showed that two thirds of respondents would not want to send their children to a school based on their own religion. And other research shows that a majority of parents want their school to come integrated. So we must ask what or who is stopping them? The education system is also continuing to fail children and young people from lower income backgrounds. In 2017-2018, 54% of girls entitled to free school meals obtained five GCSEs A star to C grade, compared with 83% of girls not entitled to. The figures for boys are also stark, with less than half, 44%, getting that level of post-primary qualification from lower income backgrounds, compared to 75% of their peers who are better off. Now, it's not possible for wider socio-economic inequalities to be addressed through a single education system, but early intervention does make a big difference, and this must be considered through any review. It's not just the setup of the system that we need to look at, though. It's what our children are being taught. In many cases, not taught in our schools, and we need to reform the curriculum. There are many examples of this, but I'll briefly address the shortcomings of the educational experiences for those people who identify as LGBTQ. The Department of Education's own research was published in 2017 and it raises serious concerns about the inadequacy of RSE in our schools and how it puts young people at risk. The report noted that half of the respondents were bullied as a result of their sexual orientation or gender identity and 92% said that there was insufficient information in, available in relation to LGBTQ issues in their post-primary school. Two-thirds of those identifying as LGBTQ do not feel welcomed or valued in their post-primary school and some people decided not to come out because of the negative attitudes of others. Such attitudes, it appears, is based on a, back, a lack of understanding and people leading to stereotypes and, in some cases, intolerance. 88.6% 88, of LGBTQ people heard homophobic or transphobic the language in schools. Now, the R Minds research found that 61.2% of LGBT people had been called hurtful names in relation to sexuality. The experience of those in our schools is not totally down to the inadequacy of RSE, but it's a start and it opens up a wider the issue of the quality and quantity of RSE education in general. We the must not. Time is up. Okay, thank you. Okay. I now call Pat Cackney. I uh, rise to uh, support the motion as amended. Um, I want to thank uh, our teachers, um, our headmasters, all of those classroom assistants. 
everyone who gets out, even this lollipop ladies, I don't know if they're still going or not, I've stopped running the grandchildren to school. But uh, I want to thank all of them there. I want to put it in record of thanking Mr Baker, the Permanent Secretary, and the contributions that he made for the three years that it wasn't working here, and uh, I remember as soon as we got it up and going, our now minister went out with me to one of our local schools, and uh, a school enhancement project was granted there. I stand here today to say I acknowledge the change is needed. I agree that change is needed. Uh, I want to really sit down. I just want to pull out one wee thing. I think it was up until about the 1980s. I just remember my parents supporting the schools and my grandparents. And I just want to, to, to bring it across here. Um, the efficiencies across the education, CCMS receives about three million pounds. And out of that three million pounds, it supports 450 schools. Uh, that to me looks like value for money and sounds like value for money. It's an inclusive education enshrined within the Catholic maintained schools. It's quality of education and high standards in Catholic schools, excellent leadership in our schools, up for the debate. I really am up for the debate about change, and I know change has to happen. And I recognise the positive contributions by integrated education, and I stand here to state that a review is needed. And in fact, one of the early things that I got whenever I come into to, I was on the programme for government, and all parties agreed there was an agreement right across that we needed this BEGOA type report in order to look into our education. But don't always be trying to throw out uh, the baby and the, with the water. You know, there are good, and let's all look at the good. As I said there at the start, I uh, uh, want to, I'm standing here in order to support the motion as amended. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I call Jim Mallister. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. It's pretty clear to me that though all the executive parties bought in to, they said, into the New Deal, new approach, that they haven't at all bought in on this issue. Because the first two sentences of what it says in the uh, Appendix 2, the education system has a diversity of school types each with its own distinctive ethos and values. However, it is not sustainable. The target of those two sentences is that you can't go on with the current diversity in school types. Yet barely at all in this debate have we heard any addressing of that problem, of the sheer diversity of school types. Indeed, we've had defence, particularly from the SDLP, of maintaining the current school, t school types. Yes, I will. Not defend that sector at all. I stood here to, t to inform the House of the good work which, which it does, and I stand here to state that I am up for change, and I am sure they are up for change, and I know that change is needed, and change will come about. Members, the next minute. Well, uh, I wasn't. It wasn't actually the member I had in mind. It was the first speaker <laughs> from the SDLP that I had in mind. But uh, if the cap fits where, it, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Let you know when you attack one of us, you attack us all. <laughs> I'll say the same. <laughs> right. You know, we've, we've had this running away from the issue of diversity uh, in school types. Indeed, it's notable that the Sinn Féin amendment to the motion takes out a critical word. The motion ends by calling for an inclusive single education system. The Sinn Féin amendment removes the word inclusive because it's quite clear that Sinn Féin, indeed it was clear from Mr O'Dowd's contribution, they're not prepared to address the diversity of types because they're sacred cows. And for them, of course, the greatest sacred cow is the Irish medium sector. Uh, and so we have this situation where Irish medium can't be touched, maintained sector can't be touched. So who is going to be the victim in all of this? Is it going to be the controlled sector? Is that where the fire and the focus is? I fear it is. And, you know, new uh, 
uh, document, your approach talks about equity. Well, let's talk about equity. I recently asked a series of questions of the minister. I asked, what is the per pupil spend across the four sectors? And here are the figures. The controlled sector gets the least money, 3,531 per pupil. Next comes the maintained sector, 3,611. Next comes the integrated uh, controlled sector, 3,669. And a way out ahead is the Irish medium sector on 3,821. So the Irish medium sector already gets 8% more than the controlled sector. It gets 6% more than the maintained sector. So if we're going to talk about equity, let's talk about it. But let's recognize we can't have these sacred cows. And if we're looking for efficiencies, if we're looking for equity, if we're looking for the issue of diversity and tackling it and reducing the number of sectors, then surely on any of those approaches, the most obvious candidate is the Irish medium sector. It is the most fitted financially in this system. It is the one that's incapable of integration because it wants to teach in a different language. Yes, very well. I think the member has given way. Surely the member must realise that the uh, Irish medium sector has been deprived of necessary funding from this House for many, many years and now is playing catch-up. It provides an invaluable contribution to communities such as mine and towns like Straban and Oma, and I would like the member to acknowledge that it does have a positive impact on the lives of many children. Catch-up, where you can now create an Irish medium school with 12 pupils? Why is that playing catch-up? That is favouritism within the system. And I would like the Minister to assure us that if there is any independent review within its terms of reference, we'll be addressing the diversity of the, se of the system, whether we can sustain all the sectors, whether equity will address the overfunding of some to the detriment of others, and that we're not just interested in creating a system where we protect the two sacred cows of Irish medium and maintained and sacrifice the controlled sector, because it sounds very much like that to me in terms of this direction of travel. I now call on the Minister of Education, Mr Peter Weir, to respond to the debate, and you shall have up to 15 minutes. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Could I first of all thank uh, Mr Little and Ms Armstrong for bringing forward this debate. It was good particularly to note that I think throughout much of this debate it was witnessed by uh, some young pupils that were here. I welcome their presence. I also welcome both the tone of the debate and much of the content. I want to move forward on the basis of to take up the last point. There would be wide terms of reference and the wide opportunities for the panel to look at everything and also something which delivers fairly for all our pupils. Can I also put on record, I suppose I will join with others first of all in paying tribute to the work of the various public servants in delivering education, particularly during the hiatus in which the Assembly um, was prevented from meeting for three years, and also actually the, the ongoing work particularly of the educational uh, staff. Um, also at the outset I would like to put on record my agreement uh, to the motion uh, and state that I support the commitment to new decade, new approach to undertake an independent review of education. I hope within the next few weeks to bring uh, a paper with terms of reference and indeed the way forward to the Executive. Can I also think, um, as it was mentioned, think by Mr Humphrey, indicate that the other commitment in terms of an expert working group or panel uh, within uh, on underachievement will also be brought forward at the same time uh, so that the two can move together. And I think there's also a point made by a number of speakers that if we are looking for the best expertise, this is not simply those who are drawn from the world of academia, but uh, I think we need a, broadly range, uh, a broad range of people on uh, both panels that can reflect, if you like, the, the wider needs of our society. I think critical to that as well will also be a high level of stakeholder engagement, both on an individual level and indeed uh, with various sectoral organisations, and a role to ensure that, that there is that opportunity degree of, of, of input from the major bodies in education. Um, can I turn this to, having mentioned that I'm, I'm content with the motion, turn to the two amendments. 
First of all, I'm happy to support the Amendment 1, standing in the name of Ms Mullen and uh, Ms Kelly. Uh, it does, I think, to be fair in terms of the wording, reflect entirely accurately the exact wording of the, the new decade, new approach. So I think it's entirely appropriate that we adopt that as a change. Um, and while I have some sympathy for some of the remarks that Mr Carroll has made, uh, in particular, I want to see a resolution to the uh, industrial action uh, with, uh, in terms of teacher pay. And also, I, I agree with them that there has been an under-resourcing of education. I want to leave her in as much. I, I can't support, I appreciate it may be a slightly moot point anyway, as it's mutually exclusive with Amendment 1. Uh, but uh, I can't support the amendment, uh, Mr Carlton, because it removes any reference to efficiency within the system. Now, I appreciate the, the member has a certain approach, shall we say, to efficiency that, uh, in terms of interpretation of the word, that he looks at not so much as opposed to the opposite of rose-tinted glasses, but in this case probably red-tinted glasses in terms of efficiency. But, you know, the reality is that in terms of efficiency, we do have to realise that there will have to be some levels of reform. Uh, indeed, I note, it would be interesting, I note uh, the member for North Down, Ms Woods, referred to uh, part of the problem with our system is there's inefficiencies within the, the system. And we can't simply delete efficiency from any level of, of review because that means we are not necessarily spending the maximum amount of money uh, on frontline services for, for our children. And so uh, while I'm sure the, um, the intentions of Mr Carroll were very well-meaning, I'll be supporting Amendment 1 rather than Amendment 2. We're all in agreement, I think, that uh, all the speakers, that our education system faces significant challenges. And if we're to continue to deliver world-class education, we need to reform modernise and transform. Uh, we should be always looking to strive to improve services and deliver better outcomes for our children and young people. Even if we were entirely content with everything in the current system, we should always be looking for better. And all good systems look continually at how they can improve that quality of provision and good schools uh, to um, bring that about. You know, we should also not underestimate the task ahead, nor should we think that this review will be a panacea to the woes uh, real or perceived. The only way we can bring about true reform, I think, is also through building consensus. And I think that will be a critical aspect as we move ahead in delivering a managed program of transformation. Education in Northern Ireland and elsewhere sometimes is a contested space and change is inevitably a highly emotive issue. I note the former minister uh, made reference to one member who was on the one hand urging a closure of a school but lobbying in its place. That's maybe just a, uh, one example of that. But a non-political, non-sectoral and wholly independent review may be a good starting point, but expectations, I think, do need to be managed. Uh, as I indicated, it's my intention to bring that to the executive in the, the, the near future. Can I say it's important that while I suppose we've highlighted a lot of the problems that are there, that we don't lose sight of the strengths of our current education system, uh, which I think we should promote and build upon. I think we can be very proud of our school leaders, our teachers and our pupils. I know from my, my school visits that we have a well-trained and highly committed workforce and our children and young people continue to achieve high levels of attainment. Uh, whilst we cannot and should not measure performance in education solely on exam results, and I think there's been very valuable points made about, uh, particularly as we look for different pathways uh, on, a non, on, a non, um, on a vocational, non-academic way, uh, we can be proud of the results that our young people achieve. International experience and evidence suggests that our primary and post-primary are performing well and that our schools demonstrate many of the features which underpin high attainment and equity. Uh, attainment of, of pupils entitled to free school meals has continued to improve and evidence from PISA 2018 points to the success of this approach in tackling educational underachievement. We have seen over the last number of years a steady rise and improvement in our school performances. And also, while there is still a major issue around underachievement, we have seen the gap uh, closing, that there is a reduction in the gap between those who are on free school meals and non-free school meals. However, there is more needs to be done in closing that gap, and hence the commitment uh, in New Deal, New Decade to an expert panel also on the issue of underachievement. All of our, almost all of our school leavers progress into education, employment or training and I want to acknowledge the hard work of the pupils, their teachers and school leaders, for the positive uh, outcomes being achieved across the system. Furthermore, the OECD identified uh, the coherence of our school improvement policies as a key strength. So, in terms of reform, though, 
the education system faces many challenges, and I think the issues are well known, well understood, and I think the argu uh, arguments well rehearsed. For example, our schools and teachers are often, uh, are often being asked to deliver more and more, but with fewer resources. Overall, I know it's been referenced, uh, the estimate is that if we take what is probably the high point of, of educational funding in 2010, if you take into account inflation and the various pressures, uh, there's probably 245 million less in spending powers, uh, and there are a greater number of schools in deficit, more schools in surplus. Um, I would concur with the point that Mr. Carroll made, that actually the statistics for 2010-11 compared to today mean, albeit we have a slightly larger um, school population, that the actual spend per pupil is less than it was nine years ago. Now, uh, many of the inflationary factors have maybe been less in education than they have been elsewhere. Uh, but education particularly has been hit by a range of national changes, particularly around uh, pension changes and national insurance. Does the Minister give way? Yes, I give way to play. I'm very grateful to the Minister for giving way, and he mentions the pressing need of school budgets, and I suppose I should declare an interest. I'm on the Board of Governors of Brandwell Primary School, the school that my own children attend. Would the Minister agree with me that one of the ways in which we can help to tackle that is to devolve additional powers over school budgets to head teachers away from the centre. Yeah. I agree with the member. I'll be coming to that uh, in, a, in a minute or two. It's also important that we utilise our funding, our funding effectively and efficiently to build a system that is sustainable. And particularly, I think the school estate is clearly through area planning. There, do, there does need to be changes, and some of those will be painful. Uh, linked to the well, I. I, I'm, I'm a little bit pressed for time, um, so unfortunately I have to decline the, the wise, wise words of intervention yeah, yeah. from the Honourable Member for North Antrim. Uh, linked to the, the funding position, as I say, is our network of schools. Now, whenever we look at the network of schools, it's not simply about a cost saving exercise. It's an educational policy which has got cross-party support down the years, which seeks to deliver the best education to all our children in the highly sustainable schools. In addition, our teachers are having to deal with increasingly a wide range of increasingly complex needs. The pressures on, on young people are greater now than perhaps they've ever been. And we've mentioned, obviously, in terms of the increasing numbers of um, SEN issues. I know, well, again, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit pressed for time on that side of it. Um, and mention has been made, which is something I'll be coming back to in much greater detail to the Education Committee in a week's time, the particular problems uh, that have been shown by the audit of the uh, Education Authority. Uh, the review, I think, will wish to consider all these challenges and, more importantly, make recommendations on potential solutions. Now, it is important that members realise that we have not been simply operating against a blank page. The Department has taken a proactive approach to addressing some of these, these challenges, even in the absence of devolution, uh, through the establishment of a transformation programme. Uh, and it is to be commended for commencing the work in the absence of an Assembly and Executive. The programme involves a series of projects each task with developing options to transform an aspect of education. Those include school funding, school transport, statutory assessment, area planning, delivery of pupil uh, support services, and 14 to 19 pathways, as well as a number of other issues. While this doesn't go as far as some would wish, it does bring an opportunity for meaningful, meaningful action to be taken. Mention has been made by the member from South Belfast uh, in relation to procurement. Uh, that is something I want to see a greater devolution coming to, the, uh, to school principals, issues around uh, employment of teachers, issues around pathways. All these are critical issues. And what I'm keen to do is, in seeing that, that work progressing, we should not use the panel, uh, or indeed the review, as some opportunity simply to kick those issues the can down the road. Where there are positive changes can be made, we need to embrace those um, simultaneously with the, the review. In terms of uh, deciding, designing the review, we need to agree what the review will consider, how it's undertaken and by who, uh, whom. I, I would highlight that the local education system mentioned has been made, I think Mr O'Dowd made reference to uh, a number of reports. So there have been a considerable amount of uh, work already done. We need to recognise that the problem is not just the education system, that, that it hasn't been reviewed. The problem is sometimes we fail to agree implementation. So it's important that the review builds on previous work uh, and there's value in, in replicating, there's little value in simply replicating what's been there before. So uh, can I say in terms of that, it's also important that we take into account uh, the teacher, the parent, the child and the stakeholder. They're central to the process. Uh, ultimately, it'd be my preference that the review focusing 
on uh, identified um, identify evidence-based solutions which can be supported rather than spending time stating problems which we already understand. It's, it's also important that we have practical solutions and don't find sort of simply disappearing down rabbit holes which are simply going to be years of disagreement. In conclusion, let me reiterate that I fully intend to deliver on the commitments of New Deal, New Decade and will bring forward proposals to the Executive shortly. However, I think we do need to be realistic, uh, first of all, about time scale. And while there will be an urgency, there will take a short period at least to establish those panels. If this job is to be done thoroughly, we are probably talking about a review that for whenever it's established to when it reports, lasting in at least probably a year. It will be completed within this, this term, but this cannot be something which is simply bounced through in a very short pace of, space of time. It's also important uh, that much needed work uh, on transformation reform is not stalled. The review itself is unlikely to be the silver bullet for all the challenges that we face. And we must do that to make sure that time is not wasted, simply regurgitating what has been there before. Let me just suppose highlight there are two potential traps that I can see sometimes people falling into. One is to say, yes, clearly there's a need for additional money, but see, money is being purely a solution to everything. There, anybody who simply says that and does not say there's need for change and reform is deluding themselves. But I would also say that the people who would see the review as being the solution to everything and will simply deliver that without very significant additional resources being brought into education uh, is, is also similarly deluding themselves. From that point of view, I think the remarks of the previous Chief Executive of the EA that it requires substantial investment and reform, the two go together in relation to that. Uh, we've got to focus on finding solutions to the challenges that we face, building consensus and delivery of those actions, and securing the necessary resources and commitment for educational transformation. Our goal should be that every child has the uh, absolute best start in life and the education system is efficient, effective and sustainable, designed to deliver positive outcomes for every pupil. So I look forward to members across the House, the committee, educational stakeholders, children and young people, as we deliver on that commitment. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I now call Jerry Carl to wind on amendment number two, and you'll have up to five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and thanks. This is obviously a pretty wide range of debate in relation to our education system uh, and lots of important points and issues made. I'll try to refer to as many of them uh, as I can in, in respect to the uh, amendment. Um, and there did seem to be some unanimity in recognising the important work done by our teachers and our educational staff. I welcome that and I'm sure many teachers and educational workers, um, their unions and so forth, we, we welcome that also. I suppose many of them will also be thinking that why it's taken why has it taken so long to resolve their pay dispute uh, so many years now? Um, and I doubt very much so, Mr Deputy Speaker, that many teachers or educational workers play, pay close attention to the detail of maybe amendments, uh, instalments, but wouldn't it send a strong message to them today if amendment, an amendment could be accepted that says we support them uh, in having their pay dispute resolved. I think I would send out a very uh, strong message uh, if we could do that today. So again, I would appeal, appeal to members to accept uh, Amendment 2 in my name and not Amendment 1 for that reason. So I think a clear message should go out uh, that we recognise the important work done by our teachers, by our educational workers, and their contribution to society is invaluable. Uh, and I think by recognising uh, that, uh, we should support uh, a fair pay um, um, resolution for them. Um, uh, part of the main reason why my amendment was put in, Mr um, Deputy Speaker, was to remove the part that mentioned efficiency. Now, the Minister referred to maybe people having different uh, definitions of efficiency, but to me, uh, some of the comments made by members reaffirmed my suspicions, fears, worries, uh, and reaffirmed my reason to submit the amendment. We heard talk about needing to take tough decisions, hard decisions, and also the, the need to reduce wastage. For me and for our party, this is very worrying, uh, and to many even indeed outside this building, uh, it's code speak for a, a reduction in services 
for cutbacks, for closures, and for no increase uh, in funding. Uh, again, the reason for my amendment was to challenge those points. I mean, the minister himself even recognised the lack of spending and the decrease in spending per head of population. He gave a figure of several hundred million pounds of, of a reduction in real terms over the last uh, few years in education. Briefly, yeah. I think, we'd, again, there's a bit of confusion sometimes over efficiency. Efficiency can also be both economic and educational. So, for instance, if you get a very, very small primary school in which pupils are taught across a, a number of year groups just by one teacher, uh, the efficiency of that school may be questioned, but also actually the educational outcomes where you get uh, sort of multi years of pupils. It's, it's generally speaking not too bad whenever there's no particular difference if there's, if there's a composite class of two years. But once you move beyond that, so that is an issue whether you can see both efficiency but actually with an educational driver. The members an extra minute. I thank the Minister for his intervention. That may well be the case, but there's no dispute in the fact that efficiency has been used for 10 years now to reduce budgets, to reduce uh, money going to education. Uh, and I think that's something that he made passing reference to uh, as well. Uh, and obviously there was, there was some discussion about the future um, design and makeup of our education system, and in particular in relation to uh, integ integrated education. And for our part in People for Profit, we support and welcome integrated, uh, an integrated education system, and we believe that ultimately it should be um, secular as well. Um, I won't, sorry, I've only got a few minutes. Um, sorry, who was it, Mrs. Mull? No, oh, sorry, I'll continue on. Um, it is deeply troubling, in my view, uh, that people are, are educated um, separately based on, based on religion. Uh, and also, I think it has to be, uh, the point has to be made, obviously, this debate, there was discussion about the Irish language uh, sector. Irish la language education is important in our society. Uh, it contributes a lot to our society and it has an important role to play. And in my constituency, the fastest grow it is the fastest growing urban gale talk, and these schools should be supported, they should be expanded if they so wish to. And Irish education, Mr Deputy Speaker, is not the bogeyman or the reason why our schools are uh, underfunded. Not to mention the wealth of research which backs up the benefits uh, of dual or multilingual uh, education. Um, finally, Mr Deputy Speaker, um, I want to uh, support comments from uh, Rachel Woods about the need to move away from an education system based on academic selection and exams uh, generally. Our young people are under massive pressure to study, to work hard and go through exam after exam after exam. And that has a massive impact on their mental health uh, as well. Uh, so surely, uh, in closing, Mr Deputy Speaker, we can move towards a different kind of education system that doesn't see education simply through the prism of how many A grades or A star grades people can get, but one that supports the nurturing and development of our young people. So I would encourage people to support my amendment. Thank you. I now call on Catherine Kelly to wind amendment number one. Again, you have five minutes. Mayor, good last, Ken Corlea. Our education system is very obviously broken, and that has been evident recently in how our children with special educational needs have been treated. This amendment is simply about bringing the motion back into line with the new decade new approach agreement. I want to acknowledge the consensus in the Chamber from all members who have spoken. They have all made reference to the crisis in finance, special educational needs and area planning to name a few, which in turn highlights the need for this Assembly and Executive to bring about a radical review into our education system. The education of our children and young people is too important to mess with. Reform of our education provision is too important to undermine progress by even the appearance of messing about. The agreement tasked the executive to establish an external, independent review and set a goal of moving towards a single education system. I believe this remains the best way forward. It is based on agreement. It is based on recognition of how challenging reform is likely to be. Uh, thank you, Member, for giving me a should. In the event of a, a report coming forward that said a single educational system had the Irish medium, the integrated, the maintained, the controlled, and whatever other systems are there, all in one system, would the member and the party opposite accept that as an outcome as a single educational system for Northern Ireland? Members, an extra minute. I think that we have to be very conscious that there's a lot um, of discussion that has to take place. I think we've heard from a lot of members here um, today about the importance of 
uh, the maintained sector, the controlled sector, and the Irish medium sector. Um, the review would be based on a determination to overcome difficulties by ensuring full confidence in a review and safeguarding the pieces we have gotten right. I welcome the Minister setting up an expert panel on underachievement and a review of education very soon. I agree wholeheartedly that we need investment alongside the review. As John said in his remarks, our education system in the future should be inclusive and not exclusive. exclusive. I urge members to support amendment number one and two. I now call on Kelly Armstrong to wind up the debate on the substantive motion and you'll have up to 10 minutes. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. I hope that I won't take up your full time today. Um, I stand to wind on the substantive motion today. The reason why the Alliance Party brought forward this motion is one of frustration. And one of frustration because today is the 10th of March. The new decade, new approach document was published on the 10th of January. And in that document, it made it very clear that a programme for government should be published within two weeks of the restoration of the institutions. That hasn't happened. In that document, on page 43, as has been pointed out by Mr Alistair before, it clearly states that the education system has a diversity of school types, each with its own distinctive ethos and values. We know this. And we thank those that work in those systems. And I would like to pay tribute to them, not for just their excellence in their work, but the fact that they are struggling to get by with what they have. Indeed, in that page 43, it does say, however, this system is not sustainable. And I'd remind all members that the parties acknowledge the progress made in developing new models of sharing, cooperation and integration. And there's a desire to build on this as a basis for delivering long-term improvements in the quality, equity and sustainability of the system. Yes. Thank you very much for giving way. Just as, as a matter of fact check, and Mr Alistair actually stated that Irish medium prevented integration. Irish medium education can be non-denominational, and I know from my own experience, because my daughter is taught through the medium of Irish, and there are children from a Protestant background at her school. I don't argue with the member on that, but as I continue on here, um, we have already agreed um, that we need to build on improvements for the equity, equality, uh, I'm sorry, e quality, equity and sustainability of the system. The parties agree that the executive will commission and oversee an independent fundamental review with a focus on quality and sustainability. The educational experience and outcomes for children and young people are the most important factors. When we were discussing this within the, that talks period, there were a number of people who said to me, you're never going to get this in, Kelly. This is never going to work. There are too many vested interests. And I have to say, Mr Speaker, there are. And we have some excellent school systems, but we simply cannot afford them anymore. And we can't afford them for two reasons. It's not just the financial aspect. It is the damage that it's doing to our children. Because while Mr Newton has said and others have said that we have a fantastic school system, we do, but only for some. We have special education needs that the education authorities already admit it has been, has been failing. We have children left on school buses. We have other children, as Mr Alistair has pointed out, that receive different levels of funding depending on which type of school that they go to. I will do. Member for Kevin because she, she comes to the, uh, the heart of the issue. There is no segregation in special schools. We don't have maintained special schools, controlled special schools, Irish medium special schools. We have special schools. And if, if we took a leaf out of the book, of, of course, there's reasons why some sectors don't want to have to pay the burden for special schools. But will the member also accept that the integrated movement, which is now a sector the same as the rest, is no 50% of integrated schools are not integrated. They are from the majority of one community. And then, of course, they get round the, the tables by getting people to tick the books other. And so there's a lot of very uh, inventive accounting going on that needs to come to an end. Yeah. An important point because you'll uh, just let me get this argument out and, and I'll then come back to you. Um, and the member brings me back to my point. Nowhere in the Alliance proposal will you see the words integrated education. I am more interested, and the Alliance Party is more interested, in integrating education for the benefit of our young people and the staff that work in those schools. Why are we as adults pushing our segregation down the throats of children? 
If CCMS offer a fantastic education system, then get, let's get the best parts of that and bring it into the system. The same with the controlled sector, the same with the integrated sector, the same with any sector. It is time that we stopped spending so much money propping up organisations in order to maintain segregation and we look back at what there should be, an education system that is fit for all. We have already agreed some of the terms, Minister, and the reason why we pointed you out on this as opposed to the Executive is because the Executive for two months hasn't moved on this. And while you're bringing forward terms and conditions, I will remind you to look at page 43 at the footnote where it defines what education means and it is the full gambit of education. It is not just the schools. It looks at nursery provision and it's looking at higher edu or further education. It also looks at teachers, sectoral bodies, curriculum, the whole gambit. Can we please now have some bravery in this house? Bengoa was tough. This I put forward to each and every one of you is going to be the toughest thing that this house and that this assembly will ever face because there are a massive amount of vested, vested um, interests in education across Northern Ireland. And one of the members on this side, I apologise, I'm not sure who it was, had mentioned about the head teachers weren't very pleased. That's a vested interest. Everyone should have their say within this consultation. That's why it needs to be independent, so the independent person can make sure that all those voices are brought forward. But I say to every member in this House, we are failing some of our children in society by not having an education system that is fit for all. And I ask every one of you to just stop and consider, we've already agreed to do this in the new decade, new approach. Are we already saying that that document is a failure? No, we're not. We're saying that we're going to take forward this reform. And we're simply asking the Minister, as he has already indicated, thank you, Minister, because you're already taking it forward, that you are going to bring forward terms and conditions to the Executive. And we look forward to seeing those very soon, because this is not something that we can wait on. As you rightly say, Minister, it is going to take a substantial amount of time to create this report. It may take 15 to 20 years to then change our education system to meet those recommendations. This is going to take a long time, and it's also going to take the belief of everyone in this House to support an education system that will be fit for the future. We have children who are coming out of education systems at the moment. Some go to university, some are lucky enough to go into jobs, some go to further education, but there are many of our children who are coming out without qualifications. And what is happening to those people? They're being left behind. And many of those young people being left behind are those with special education needs. And that is a poor measurement of our society. Why are we not protecting those people who need us the most to ensure that they have a lifelong pathway whenever the options that we take for granted are not available to them? Segregation and separation of children is, is something that I absolutely believe is wrong. And the member, Justin McNulty, um, had mentioned about, you know, he, he was a Catholic and went through the Catholic education system and he understood about diversity. I'm sorry, I have to disagree. I'm a Catholic and I went through a Catholic education system. And other, other than the fact that I had a mixed family, I never came across diversity through my school. They talked to me about it, but they didn't include me with it. And I do completely respect the member when he says that the Catholic education system is a good system. I'm a product of it, so I have to agree with that. But I have to say, we take the best of that. We take the best of everything and we bring it together to create a system that is so much better. So I say to all as well, it needs to be an inclusive system. And I will remind members that um, building a society that is inclusive needs to think about LGBT, Catholic, Protestant, all faiths and those of no faith. I will indeed. Would the member agree that the failure of the executive to amend legislation to ensure schools take account for Section 75 has contributed to the negative stereotyping and some negative well-being for LGBTQ students? I have to agree with the member, with Ms Woods, when she says that. I actually believe that we have more problems than that when we have the Fair Employment Monitoring Order that defines community by binary and doesn't actually take into account any Section 75. But we have to think that an inclusive system would be one that includes disabilities. And a way of doing this is through our school system. We can't do that while our school estate is no longer fit for purpose. So the review is critically needed. We included the word inclusive in our motion because you know, we took the Cambridge deck uh, Cambridge Dictionary definition of inclusive where it states an inclusive group or organisation tries to include many different types of people and treat them all fairly and equally compared to the Cambridge Dictionary of single which is only one. 
Our school system is comprised of wonderful young people. It is taught by wonderful teachers, and we are letting them down by taking £100 million per year out of that system to maintain segregation. Thank you. Members, before I put the question on amendment number one, can I remind you that if it is made, I will not be putting the question on amendment number two. The question is that amendment number one, standing in the name of Karen Mullen and Catherine Kelly, be made. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, no. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. The question is the motion as amended be agreed. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, no. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. I think the eyes have it, members. The eyes have it. The eyes have it. Okay. Where are we? Okay. <clears throat>